وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد وعند مظاهر دنو الهمة The ways and forms in which low aspiration manifests and inshallah ta'ala today we're going to go into the 18th and that is al-iftikharu bil-abai la'idham wal-aishu ala amjadihim it is to praise your forefathers and to live off their honor and reputation there are some people who have pious predecessors in their lineage maybe their father is a, a scholar or is a doctor or engineer or a scientist they have a salafun kiram they are pious honorable individual before him whether it be his father or granddad or great-granddad who has proceeded either in knowledge or virtue or both and has received high aspiration gained high aspiration in his life so what this person does is that they live off the honor of their father they live off the honor of either their granddad or great granddad they don't exert any effort they don't come with any hard work they just feed off the actions of their fathers or their father or their mother their grandmother that's what they do ولذلك the poet he said إذا ما الحي عاش بعظم ميت فذاك الميت حي وهو ميت If a person who is alive lives off the honor of the dead then the dead are actually alive and you are actually the dead one the poet said And the scholars they say to the person who tries to say my father was this my father said this and my father my father lives off his father's honors and his father's hard work they say a line of poetry to that person they say idha aftakhartu bi aba'i lahum sharaf ni'ma ar-rijal walakin bi'sa ma waladu if you try to tell us the honor of your father and how noble he was and his virtue we will say to you ni'ma ar-rijal honorable were, the, were those men that you talk about Honorable is your father. Honorable is your granddad and the ones that you talk about. But evil did they give birth to, we say to you. So it's a line of poetry said to a person who tries to live off what their father was or their mother or their grandmother. They want to live off that. They don't want to come with work. They don't want to come with hard work and efforts and etc. They want to live off the honor the virtue the the status of their forefathers وما اجمل قول من قال one of the beautiful statements was that which was said by the one who said it يسال ان لم تكن بفعال نفسك ساميا لم يغني عنك سمو من تسمو به ليس القديم على الجديد براجع إن لم تجده آخذا بنصيبه he said إن لم تكن if you're not بفعال نفسك ساميا if you're not going to drive your own نفس to high levels if you're not going to push yourself to your potentials if you're not going to achieve your the goals in life that you want to achieve and that you need to achieve لم يغني عنك سمو من تسمو به it won't help you the people who you're trying to use their honor and their reputation and their biography those who you're trying to take from their energy their energy and their efforts and their hard work ليس القديم على الجديد براجع the old is not one that returns back to the new 
If something is old and it's been used, it can't come back to being new again. If you don't take your portion and that which is needed, trust me, my father was this, it's not going to help you. There's a, a very famous Somalian proverb where they say, and I'll translate it. They say, my father has a camel. What is better than that is to say, I have a donkey. In other words, the honor and the good that your father has has got nothing to do with you. My father has a camel. My father has this. My father is rich. My father is... No, what is better is I have a, I have an egg. Is better. What you own is better. And also, the poet also said, ليس الكريم بمن يدنس عير الله ويرى مرؤته تكون بمن مضى حتى يشيد بناءه ببنائه ويزين صالح ما أتوه بما أتى. The poet he said, the generous one, the noble one. Is not one. ليس الكريم بمن يدنس عرضه. The righteous person, the smart, the clever, the one who has high aspiration, is not one that destroys his own reputation. He doesn't destroy himself, and does not then see. Once he destroys his own reputation, he doesn't. He doesn't then see. ويرى مرؤته تكون بمن مضى. And then he doesn't see that his dignity. It's in those who preceded him, that his forefathers or his grandparents. No. Until he comes and he strengthens his infrastructure himself with them. He uses them to perfect himself and become a better person. And what the rise and noble one does is that he beautifies himself with the things that they did. He builds on what they built on. So he uses his parents' honor as a stepping stone to grow his legacy and his righteous works and his obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even in the world. If you came to a job today, think about it. And they asked you, how are you? Where have you studied? Where have you learned? And you keep saying, my father, do you know who my father is? You know what my father said? You know what my father achieved? You know what my father? Or you say, my mother. My mother is this. My mother. I mean, would that in any way, shape or form be a reason for you to be given that job and they know you don't know your right hand from your left hand? They won't give you the job. It just shows what is your father got to do with this situation. I mean, okay, great he is and noble he is. Praiseworthy he is, as you say. Lakin, what have you achieved? We want to know you. You're the one that's going to work for us. So don't try to use your mother's honor or your father's honor or your grandparents, grandfather, grandmother, whatever it may be, to get around in, in this world. And yes, some people do. And verse, vice versa is true. Don't let your forefathers wrongdoings. Your father may not have been a great person. He may have been a criminal, for instance. That doesn't mean that you're a criminal by default. No, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. وَلِذَلِكَ the ayah says, يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, according to some of the, of the view of one of the views in the, in the ayah, that Allah may bring a disbeliever from, from him. Allah brings a believer. Ibrahim alayhi salam, his father was not a believer. Allah brought him out. And Ibrahim alayhi salam preached his father, a prophet, from the Ulul Azmi min al-Rusul, from one of the five chosen prophets, according to if there is that opinion, or that opinion is strong, he's one of the five. Nabiullah Ibrahim. He is Khalilullah. He came from a non-Muslim who's in the hellfire. His father is in the hellfire. Ibrahim alayhi salam. And of Nuh alayhi salam. He's a prophet of Allah. He is, he gave birth to a non-Muslim boy who died in that state. So from a noble prophet came a disbeliever. And from a disbeliever came a noble prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kullu mri'in bima kasab raheen. Everybody will be held account to what they do and the effort that they exert. 
and the hard work that they come with, no one's going to take somebody else's actions. Unless, of course, they were the reason for that person to do that action, then yes. But if not, you're not going to take the sin of your father, and nor are you going to take the reward of your father's actions. His actions are his, and your actions are yours. Your hard work and your efforts is what you're going to be accounted for your al Qiyamah. What did the Prophet ﷺ say to his daughter Fatima? Radiallahu ta'ala anha. What did the Prophet say to her? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said to her, Fatima, ask me for whatever you want, whatever you desire. From my wealth, I'll give it to you. Like, and I cannot help you the day of judgment from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can't do anything for you. Yawmul Qiyamah. If Nabi Allah Muhammad said that to his own daughter, Fatima, who he loved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that shows that we can't do anything for our own children. And our children need to understand that, that they need to work hard for themselves. I'm going to now go into the 19th مظهر من مظاهر دنوب الهمة and that is كثرة المزاح والإسفاف فيه going overboard in joking and being excessive in it and this happens a lot by by the way between the people وهذا الأمر يكثر وقوعه بين الناس it happens a lot between the people so you see a person يغلب عليه كثرة المزاح والإسفاف والتمادي فيه Excessively joking. There's no, you hardly find this person serious. He's always joking. Always you meet joking. And this really is a form of low aspiration. Because joking drops veneration and respect. Joking too much and laughing too much. What it does to you is that it takes away veneration and respect for you. It also takes away from you your honor and your reputation. And it opens the tongue of the dim-witted ones. The dim-witted ones will open their tongues at you. وَقِيلَ فِي بَعْضِ مَنْثُورِ الْحِكَمِ was said in one of the wise statements المزاح يأكل الهيبة كما تأكل النار الحطب joking excessively eats your honor and the respect and the veneration كما تأكل النار الحطب the way that the fire eats the wood and also it was said by the wise مَنْ كَثُرَ مِزَاحُهُ زَالَتْ هَيْبَتُهُ Anyone who's joking and laughing is excessive beyond and above, the respect for him drops. مَنْ كَثُرَ مِزَاحُهُ زَالَتْ هَيْبَتُهُ The respect and the honor that, that the people have for you will drop. Ibn Abd al-Barr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, وَقَدْ كَرِهَ جَمَاعَةٌ مِنَ الْعُلَمَاءِ الْخَوْضُ فِي الْمِزَاحِ Ibn Abd al-Barri rahimahullah, he said that a large number of scholars disliked al-khawda fil mizahi to indulge deeply and excessively into laughing and joking lima fihi min dhameem al-aqibah because it has a bad ending wa min at-tawsili ila al-a'rad and it is a means to go into other people's honors wa istijlaab al-dagha'ini and it brings out Bad feelings وإفساد الإخاء and it destroys brotherhood joking وكان يقال ابن عبد البر also says in his كتاب بهج المجالس he says وكان يقال لكل شيء بدء ابن عبد البر he said everything has a beginning وبدء العداوة المزاح and the beginning of enmity and hate from one person to another starts by a joke one person made وكان يقال it was said لو كان المزاح فحلا ما القح إلا الشر. I mean, ponder here, and I want you to think with me here as well. How many people do you know who stopped talking to each other because one person made a joke about the other person? 
And if this person even asks for forgiveness, this other person thinks that this person meant it deliberately. Sa'id ibn al-Asir radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, لا تمازح الشريف فيحقد ولا الدنيئة فيجترئ عليك سعيد بن العاصن he said do not joke with an honorable person because in his heart something may enter it hate towards you ولا الدنيئة do not joke with a low individual the, the, the insignificant person فيجترئ عليك and then he opens his tongue at you he doesn't know your honor and your reputation and your respect. He doesn't know it. You joked with him. He thinks he can joke with you. And then he jokes to you about things that are so irrelevant. Things that are your honor. But you're the one who opened that door. Maymoon ibn Bihrani, he said, إِذَا كَانَ الْمِزَاحُ أَمَامَ الْكَلَامِ فَآخِرُهُ الشَّتْمُ وَالْلِطَامِ Maymoon ibn Mehran, كاتب عمر ibn Abdul Aziz. He was a writer for Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Maymoon ibn Mehran. He used to write for Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. And Umar ibn Abdul Aziz كَانَ لَا يُقَرِّبُ إِلَّا الْأَفَاضِلِ Umar ibn Abdul Aziz would only bring close to himself the honorable people, the general, the noble people. That's the people that were around Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. So Maymun ibn Mehran is a great imam. He said, إِذَا كَانَ الْمِزَاحُ أَمَامَ الْكَلَامِ If joking is the beginning of the speech, فَآخِرُ الشَّتْمُ وَالْلِطَامِ The ending of that conversation is going to be insult and beating. Physical, an abusive language is going to come from it. The poet, he said, لا تمزحن فإذا مزحت فلا يكن مزحا تضاف به إلى سوء الأدب وحذر ممازحة تعود عداوة إن المزاح على مقاومة الغضب The poet, he said, لا تمزحن أما لا تمزحن Don't joke فإذا مزحت فلا يكن if you joke and you want to joke, then do not let your joke be a joke where bad manners is followed with it. Many people, they joke, but it's disrespectful what they just said. There's some jokes that are good. But some people, their jokes are disrespect. For example, they will joke about someone's appearance or someone's looks, and they will make that a joke. That one, تضاف به إلى سوء الأدب. If that's bad manners. Whether we let's put the joke aside, but that is Sul Adab, correct? Yes, it is. So then that's something you shouldn't say generally, even if it was in a joke. Something you shouldn't generally say, Sul Adab. The kind of jokes that you look at when the Imam Ulama do is generally uh, jokes that don't, it's not targeting a person. Um, uh, or that they're trying to uh, hurt the person. It's not like that. And um, like the woman that came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And she said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm going to enter Jannah And he said, elderly people don't enter Jannah She cried And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, he, he said to her, no And he was joking with her He said, but everybody who enters Jannah is young So the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam In no way, shape or form did he attack her No way did he belittle her Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam some people's jokes are insults, name calling in their jokes. And when you say, Akhi, why did you say that? He go, oh, I was only joking. Sometimes I was only joking and whether they're serious, you can't even tell the difference. So the poet, he said, لا تمزحا فإذا مزحت فلا يكن مزحا تضاف به إلى سوء الأدب Don't joke. But if you choose to joke, then let it be a joke that doesn't accompany it Bad manners and bad etiquettes. And be careful of a joke that will bring about enmity. In al mizaha, um, joking is actually ala muqaddimati al ghadabi. It's the it's the introduction and the beginning of anger. Another poet, he said, فَإِيَّاكَ إِيَّاكَ الْمِزَاحَ فَإِنَّهُ Be careful and stay away from joking. فَإِنَّهُ يُجَرِّي عَلَيْكَ الطِّفْلَ Because it will make the child, the little kid, open his tongue at you. وَالدَّنِسَ النَّدْلَ And also, the insignificant, dim-witted one will also open his tongue at you. وَيُذْهِبُ مَاءَ الْوَجْهِ بَعْدَ بَهَائِهِ It will take away from you 
the nur on your face يعني the veneration and the respect that was coming from you it all goes وَيُورِثُهُ مِنْ بَعْدِ عِزَّتِهِ ذُلَّةِ and all of the honor that you had what it will inherit you now is humiliation I'm joking so subhanallah this is something that a person needs to understand the importance of reducing on it the intent here is not not to joke at all that's not what I'm saying here what I'm saying is don't be excessive in doing it and also don't do it to everybody some people you're serious with them and you're and in some situations you you have that character with some people it's not every place and every way you do it and you do it with the amount that is needed and when the time comes on when you need to be you're serious if that goes then what happens is disrespect belittling comes and if you're always excessively serious it may bring about al-malali wa sa'ama it may bring about boredom people might become bored of listening to you so joking the scholars they say al-mizahu fi al-kalami kal milh fi al-ta'mi joking is like salt in the food in udima aw zada ala al-had fa huwa madhmum if there's no joking the means there's never joke then you can imagine food with no salt and if you increase in joking then you can imagine food with so much salt it doesn't become praiseworthy right but that is a line of poetry in two lines of poetry a poet said afi tab'aka al makdud bil jiddi rahatan yajma wa allilhu bi shay'in min al mazh ولكن إذا أعطيته المزح فليكن بمقدار ما تعطي الطعام من الملح. He said, sometimes in your nature, your nature and the way you are, and you follow it about, with a bit of joking, a bit. Be someone who sometimes jokes. But remember, he said, ولكن إذا أعطيته المزح فليكن. But if you're going to give in to joking, those situations that you feel like there needs to be a joke. فَلْيَكُنْ لَرِئْ بِي بِمِقْدَارِ مَا تُعْطِ الطَّعَامَ مِنَ الْمِنْحِ Make it like the salt when it comes to adding it to the food. Do you add too much food onto the salt? No. Uh, food. Do you add too much salt into the food? No. You don't. The same way you don't joke too much. And is it praiseworthy if there's food with no salt in it whatsoever? No, not really. It doesn't taste good. So that is the balance that is needed. laughing and joking too much and becoming excessive in that is an indication that a person lacks high aspiration and the question here is just how is that possible what is the relationship with joking and high aspiration the relationship is that high aspiration is a person who's focusing on what is serious and what is important in life and generally speaking the important things in life are serious they're not things that are Uh, that are not jokes it's not a matter of joking serious things in life that you have to achieve they require sweat and blood you see you need to sweat for it if you want to gain weight uh, sorry if you want to lose weight you want to be in shape it's not a joking matter when you go to the gym and you need to work out it's pain it's it's sweat it's it, that's that's what it is if you want to memorize the quran it requires lack of you know reducing on your sleeping it requires you know spending yourself time alone with yourself revising repetition all of that it's not a joking matter ولذلك, joking too much takes away from your seriousness in things that you need to achieve you'll take everything not you'll take everything as a joke and that's what happens to many people their personality of laughing too much excessively and joking too much excessively it does generally speaking go into other things in their lives the way they are to their children the way they are with their partner the way they and you tend to find their life is not in in order mainly because they're not a serious person they take everything as a joke so al jiddu wal ijtihad was sabr wal musabara hard work 
exerting a lot of effort, patience. And there are times in your life that you need a joke. ولكن إذا أعطيته المزح فليكن بمقدار بمقدار ما تعطي الطعام من الملح. Let it be controlled. Don't go overboard. لا excessively uh, and don't become lackadaisical regarding it. I'm going to stop there inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaytan and Allah and his messenger are both free from it. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdi ashadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel. Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.